Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome to week seven. I have graded your project one, so please take a look, and if you have any questions, you can let me know. I'm currently grading your blog entries, and so you should see those scores appear shortly. Now, let me explain what's happening for week seven. For week seven, we will be looking at academic literacy, uh, and so we are really going to be doing the opposite of what this little emoticon up here suggests. This emoticon represents that first minimum wage paragraph from last week in that it has a tone that is very uh, attacking, that is critiquing, that is irrational. And that's not what we're going to be doing in our academic writing. Um, last week, I'd asked you guys to take a look at two little excerpts. Well, one excerpt from the novel and then a short piece from Gerald Graff. And the reason that I had you look at those two is because I see that there, there's a... Uh, a thread that runs through both of them, that there's some similarity. And specifically, uh, what I was looking at is that in both cases, the authors are suggesting that academic thinking and writing is really complex thinking and writing. Uh, and there's a great little quote from the novel that I'd like to share quickly. Um, Bradbury explains that the comfortable people want only wax moon faces, poreless, hairless, expressionless. And he uses that to describe the sorts of information that they want to surround themselves with. And I love that idea of just this wax moon face, uh, that it's not really given us much. He contrasts that wax moon face to the pores. He calls it the vivid detail or the awareness of life. Uh, and he talks about how we have to work with ideas that may make us uncomfortable. And that sort of thinking is paralleled in Gerald Graff's text when Gerald Graff starts to talk about how the investigation of sports got him to think in these really complex ways. How he learned to build his own claims, but he also learned how to accept the claims of others. And he learned how to marshal evidence and to synthesize ideas. And so all of that stuff is the stuff that we are going to be doing in project number two. And so for this week, I'm going to ask that you take a look at two videos that I've provided in the week's materials. And the first video gives us some foundational concepts for looking at academic argument. It's this Toolman model. Uh, and I'm going to give you these, thing, these ways of thinking that I hope we can then start to see in the arguments that we'll be writing. In the second video that I've provided, I'm specifically looking at different patterns of reasoning that we can embed in our writing. And the hope is that in looking at both of these videos, you'll get a real sense of not what you're talking about, but how you're talking about it. And so I ask that you take a look at those videos. And then for the work, I'm going to ask that you take a couple of concepts from those videos and you start to apply it. So you're going to read a couple of excerpts from Hidden Intellectualism. And you're going to analyze those excerpts uh, with regard to the concepts that I give you in those videos. And then I'm also going to ask that you begin thinking about your own project. Because in project number two, you have a choice to write about whatever it is that you're interested in. But I'm looking for how you write about it. So I'm looking that you can talk about all of these complicated ideas in a respectful, fair, academic tone. So that's what we have going on.